Hello, everybody. This is Advocate Lucinda, your empowerment lawyer. Last week, I uploaded a video on state and federal sovereign immunity and how the sovereign immunity can be weighed and then the state and federal government can be sued. And in that discussion, I mentioned injunctions. And I want to continue the discussion on injunctions. So let's get started. So to help us illustrate what the injunction and temporary restraining orders are and when to file them, we're going to refer to last week's topic, specifically the ex parte Young case. So let's do a recap on that case. In this case, their shareholders sued the state of Minnesota and the railroads because of the legislature's having legislated a law that the shareholders argued violated their 14th Amendment rights. So as a result, they sued the Minnesota state, the railroads, and they filed a motion for an injunction against the attorney general who was young. Why? Because Mr. Young was making an effort to get the law fully enacted. And the court, after having heard from the parties, issued an injunction against the attorney general from enforcing the law. So let's get into the injunctions. An injunction is an order from the court prohibiting a party from performing or ordering a specified act temporarily or permanently. Injunctive relief is an equitable remedy, meaning there is no other remedy at law. And if an order is not in place an injunction order is not in place, then the person filing the motion for injunctive relief will suffer irreparable harm. And that's essentially what the shareholders were saying in Ex Parte Young that listen, no amount of money could help us. If the court does not stop the Attorney General, from enacting this newly legislation, then we are going to suffer. Make sense? So let's look at the preliminary injunction. And you can find this at Federal Rules of Civil Procedure 65. And I will also include a link with additional, more detailed information about the preliminary injunction. And the link will be in the description page of this video. A preliminary injunction is an interlocutory order issued by a judge early in a lawsuit to stop the defendant from continuing their allegedly harmful actions or commanding them to act in a certain manner to preserve the status quo before the final judgment. So let's break this down. An interlocutory order is a non-final temporary order issued during the course of litigation. Yes, litigation continues with what I call the chief complaint. For example, the shareholders sued the state of Minnesota and the railroads. And the interlocutory 
order addresses the immediacy of harm against the movement of the motion. Now, the party seeking a preliminary injunctive relief must demonstrate the following. One, the plaintiff must convince the court that they are likely to prevail on the merits of the lawsuit. And of course the merits, for example, in Ex parte Young is the question of the law regarding Minnesota's legislatures enacting the new law regarding railroad fees. Two, the plaintiff must show that if relief is not granted, he or she will suffer irreparable injury. Three, the plaintiff must show that whatever damage the opposing party would suffer, that the plaintiff would suffer even greater damage that would threaten a greater injury to the plaintiff. Four, the court will balance the equities. And what are we saying? In determining whether to deny or grant the injunction, the court weighs many factors such as public policy, public interest, and it looks at the hardship or any hardship that would occur to the parties. So let's look at the permanent injunction and you can read this at federal rules civil procedure 65 also the link i mentioned earlier you will also be able to read additional more detailed information on the permanent injunction a permanent injunction is a court order requiring a person to do or cease doing a specific action that is issued as a final judgment in a case. So at this stage, full-fledged litigation has occurred. The parties have exchanged mandatory disclosures. There has been discovery. It is likely the defendant has filed a motion for summary judgment. And I say defendant because usually it is the defendant who files a motion for summary judgment, although the plaintiff can file a motion for summary judgment as well. And assuming the moving party has convinced the court that a preliminary injunction is needed, the plaintiff further convinces the court that a permanent injunction is needed, then of course, the permanent injunction would replace the preliminary injunction. Now, to win this permanent injunction, the moving party must establish the following. One, that he or she has suffered irreparable injury. Two, that remedies available at law, such as monetary damages, are inadequate to compensate for the injury. Three, that after the court has considered the hardships of both parties and having balanced them, the permanent injunction is warranted for the movement or plaintiff. And four, the permanent injunction being sought would not hurt public interest. And remember, a court would issue a permanent injunction only where money damages will not 
suffice. Now let's talk about the restraining order. The temporary restraining order or TRO is a short-term pre-trial temporary injunction. To obtain a TRO, the party seeking the order must show that if the order is not put in place, he or she will suffer immediate irreparable injury. Thus, a judge can issue the order immediately without informing the other parties and without holding a hearing. And the order will last until the court holds a hearing on whether or not to grant a preliminary injunction. And also, let me say this about these three reliefs. A court's decision to grant or deny a preliminary injunction is appealable. The same for a permanent injunction. Both are appealable. With regards to the temporary restraining order may not be appealed. You know, I always say when you filing in federal court, always read your jurisdictional rules, local rules, because the laws may vary from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, okay? I trust this has been helpful to you. I am Advocate Lucinda, and we'll see you next time. Take care.